Philip Selway is a drummer best known as the rhythmic backbone of Radiohead. Selway's drumming style is marked by its nuance, as well as his ability to weave his playing into the larger fabric of the music. His songwriting abilities, coupled with his unique approach to drumming, have made him a vital member of Radiohead and an important figure in the music industry. Philip Selway is an English multi-instrumentalist and songwriter who began playing with schoolmates Tom York, Ed O'Brien and Colin and Johnny Greenwood in the mid 80s. They were originally known as On A Friday but later changed their name to Radiohead and over a 40 year span would release groundbreaking and genre defining music together. In addition to his work with Radiohead, Selway has also pursued a solo career as a singer-songwriter. He released his first solo album, Familial, in 2010, which was noted for its acoustic, folk-inspired sound, and he's since gone on to release two more solo records. Now, I've uploaded videos featuring highly skilled and flamboyant drummers such as Billy Cobham, Ginger Baker, and Steve Gadd. Please do check those videos out once you finish with this one. For this particular video, I chose Philip Selway as the focus because his drumming style is different from the others. It's characterized by its subtlety, nuance, and deliberate intent. In an interview, Selway speaks to this. Stephen Morris is drumming. Just, he's the man. It's the ability to be metronomic and to be precise, but also feel human at the same time you know because that, that gives you something to aim for really you know that that feels achievable that rather than sitting down and watching the Dave Weckl drum video amazing drumming but can feel slightly unattainable but actually watching a musician who's doing it with a very distinct style of his own that felt attainable and I found, found that inspiring these are often some of the words that get mentioned by people describing Selway's style. Metronomic, solid, steady. A drumming magazine once described him as playing with mathematical precision. I want to take a closer look at his metronomic quality, specifically through the lens of odd time signatures. Throughout their discography, you can find instances of Radiohead releasing songs in odd time signatures, and Selway does a fantastic job of executing them. A strong example to begin with is 15 Step, which is in 5-4. The track starts with an electronic rhythm composed of two main parts. The first is a bass drum pattern with emphasis on the first beat, and the second is a series of claps that rhythmically alternate from bar to bar. Having one alternating rhythm played over one constant rhythm that accents the first beat creates a beautifully intricate groove that pushes and pulls in different directions. A few bars later we hear Selway's acoustic drums come in which add a more human feel to the track and is a stellar example of how he meshes acoustic with electronic drums, something I'll discuss further later on. Another example of Selway playing an odd time signature is Nude, which is in 6-8. Nude's drums are more stripped down, fully acoustic, but just as important as they're the thread tying together all the different sonic elements in the piece. Nude is a great case study that captures the nature of Selway's contributions to the band's sound. The drums are intricately woven into the fabric of the music, rather than simply serving as a rhythmic backdrop. I think this speaks to his songwriting ability as a drummer with Radiohead, but if we take a look at his solo career, there are some real gems across his discography that demonstrate his songwriting ability. One of my personal favourites being the popular By Some Miracle from his debut LP, Familial. <laughs> Electronic drums and triggers are a common talking point when discussing Selway's drumming style. Radiohead are known for utilising drum machines and loops, and Selway often has electronic pads and triggers in his live setups. However, I'm inclined not to focus on how Selway uses electronic drums in his playing, but more how he adjusts his playing to the electronic drums. My reasoning for this is linked in part to Radiohead largely sharing writing credits as a group, so it's difficult to exactly discern who made certain creative choices from track to track though I'd imagine York and Greenwood are primary candidates. If we take Idiotech from Kid A as a case study, the track begins with an electronic drum loop that was created by Johnny Greenwood on a modular synthesizer and then reworked by York. I couldn't find much evidence of Selway being involved in the creative process of the electronic drums for this track. In fact, York wanted to go in such a bold electronic new direction with Kid A that many other band members felt worried about their roles. O'Brien was quoted as saying, it's scary, everyone feels insecure, I'm a guitarist and suddenly it's like, well, there are no guitars on this track or no drums. 
The opening electronic rhythm on 15 step which we looked at earlier is probably a similar case. The idea conceptually came from some synthetic tinkering from another band member and it was down to Selway to decide how acoustic drums would fit in with the electronic drum loop. Looking at live renditions of Idiotech, the opening drum loop isn't played by Selway. This is the same for a number of other tracks like Pack Like Sardines in a Crushed Tin Box, Full Stop or Dex Dark. The drum loop is either pre-recorded or omitted completely. So let's take a look at how Selway makes electronic and acoustic drums fit together, starting with Dex Dark which was released as part of their ninth studio album, A Moon Shaped Pool. The track starts with quite a basic drum loop which continues until 1 minute 21, at which point Selway's acoustic drum kit comes in. It's a very subtle compositional choice to have the acoustic drums come in and effectively replace the electronic ones, but it's very purposeful. The drum loop was played during the track's sparse opening section, allowing York's vocals to take centre stage. When the acoustic drums come in, they signal a transition in the track. The instrumentation and mood changes and the song enters a new section. What's even more interesting is that the acoustic drums are musically very similar to the electronic ones, so Selway is able to change the mood of the track without disrupting the rhythmic feel. There's no like sardines and a crushed tin can is an example of Radiohead getting rid of the electronic drums altogether for live versions. Instead Selway plays a different more upbeat groove electing to take the snare wires off his snare to produce a more round and hollow sound similar to the one heard at the beginning of the studio version. It was fascinating researching how Selway accommodated his playing to electronic elements. This quote from an interview he did with Mono sheds more light on the topic. Thanks to hip hop and dance influence on rock music, drummers have benefited immensely from drum machines and electronic percussion. Playing along sequences with Radiohead pushed me to create some new dynamics. It's another way of solving the problem of arranging songs. Electronics are part of the dialogue now, it's a challenge and it's healthy. It has a direct impact on how I drummed over the years. One extra point I wanted to discuss was more to do with production and arrangement on the King of Limbs, specifically phasing. Steve Reich, a minimalist composer, originally developed the concept of phase shifting in his early tape music compositions. He observed that when tape loops with slightly different lengths but containing the same idea were repeated continuously, they would gradually go in and out of phase. Tom York has often referenced this technique in live performances and interviews. A good example of this in practice is this small excerpt from Feral. You can tell an extra drum track is introduced which is slightly out of sync and it creates this new rhythm. This can be done quite easily in an audio interface but Readyhead's attempt to recreate this live was to enlist a second drummer, Clive Deemer, who helped perform some of the complex rhythms from the album. Of the experience Selway mentioned, that was fascinating. One played in the traditional way, the other almost mimicked a drum machine. It was push and pull like kids at play. Really interesting. Philip Selway's mastery of unconventional beats and time signatures, his ability to fuse acoustic and electronic drums, along with his songwriting ability, have helped to shape Radiohead's sound and influence countless other musicians. Thank you so much for watching and making it to the end of the video. Please do drop a like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. And don't forget to leave a comment below of any drummers or topics you'd like me to cover next. Cheers.